Hi, everyone. Irene Ezips here. And today on the CSM Practice Podcast, we are going to talk about how, as customer success leaders, can we make sure that our customer success managers having productive, effective conversations with their customers to execute on strategies and processes that we designed for them. I think it's a conundrum. We have to attend all those meetings. We have to maybe record them and listen to them. Not anymore. I have with me Amanda. Amanda, maybe you can introduce yourself better than I can. Sure. I'm, I'm Amanda Schmidt. I am a lifelong customer success career professional, currently SVP at PandaDoc of CX, so everything post-sales. And I've been with some very good brands throughout my journey, Marketo, Adobe, WebEx. I've been fortunate enough to live through seven exits, as we all aspire to, and working for those of us that love working in a, a SaaS model. And unlike many CX professionals, I love to travel. And I'm so passionate about our pandas at PandaDoc and our customers. So our topic today is very close to heart for sure. Okay. So you you had a lot of experience working with customer success managers and kind of navigating through coaching them into effective conversations must have been a journey since the first time you had a team to now. So we're going to unveil all of that in today's discussion. But before we start, Amanda, you mentioned you love to travel. What was the most spectacular or favorite place you've ever traveled to? Favorite place is Norway. For sure. I've been there twice. I'm actually going again next year to share it with my extended family. And uh, it's just absolutely beautiful there. Oh, the wow. most spectacular place I've ever been. How about you? What's your favorite? Well, I haven't been to Norway for sure. I've been to Germany, which was also a quite beautiful place. But I would say my favorite, most spectacular place was Jordan. Oh, very, very wow. different. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The Red Rock that is just etched in my memory. It was so different than anything that I've seen before. Definitely a place I would like to go to again. I will put it on my bucket list as well. All right. So seven exits, Amanda. Hot damn. I just aspire for one. Okay. So you've been through multiple companies owning either customer experience and customer success. Yes. And now with PandaDoc, how long have you been working at the company at this point? I've been with PandaDoc for three and a half years. When I started, the CS team was a very siloed team. There was a, a U.S. team that worked more up market, and there was a European team that worked more the long tail. We brought both of those teams together about six months into my journey and then added support into it and then later added the customer experience aspect of it and customer journey. So we we do a little bit of pre-sales, but we pretty much manage the entire journey once a prospect decides to go on the journey with us at PandaDoc. Okay. So you have a team that handles high touch and another team that handles lower touch. What's kind of like the size of the team just a yeah. three and a half years ago when you just landed into your job, what was the situation like? So three and a half years ago we had 20 US pandas more CSMs. And we probably had about 15 in Europe and there was literally no segmentation mm -hmm. and they were a jack of all trades. And at the time they were very focused on expansion, not so much retention. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the journey, after we got the tech stack squared away in our foundation set was to get the motion of renewals going. We also spent some time helping to foster a newly budding AM team and focused on expansion. And once we had that fairly stable, we then are now focused purely on adoption from mm -hmm. a CSM perspective. We've kind of gone full circle and the AM team is now back in our CX organization, and they handle all the commercial responsibilities starting now in January of 2023. Today, we have over 200 people in the CX organization. Wow. So obviously a very healthy, interesting journey of growing the team and creating specialized roles and clear 
well, what we call uh, kind of like swim lanes is essentially for each role for a better customer experience. Yeah. And so our strategy this year to just boil it down and make it very simple, especially in this unique economy, is to become much more efficient, simplify the business, mm -hmm. and make sure that the journey is optimized for the customer, not internally focused, but focused for the customer. A culture of ownership. We've grown from I think when I joined, we were about 200 pandas. Now we're over 800. And so with rapid growth like that, you, sometimes you lose the culture or you get to such a large company size that it's easy to say, that's not my job, but we're very focused on our unique positive culture, as well as culture of ownership driving fast time to value for our customers, as well as that curated optimal CX journey. As I just mentioned, our mission is to deliver curated, efficient, personalized customer journeys for each segment and persona type. Today, we're an SMB business, but like most growing businesses, we continue to push up market as we can. Well, I think with 200 people on your team or teams rather, taking that vision of being able to curate programmable conversations or playbooks, if you will, based on vertical and persona, that involves a lot of coaching and training. I assume that as you got the team, the first thing you've done is scale the team, create more efficient roles, and kind of like from an internal standpoint, set the team up so that as the company grows, you can scale that customer experience operation very quickly. And once that was done, you're like, okay, now let's make it customer centric. When did that start that shift? Maybe it was always there, obviously, but was there a moment where you started saying, well, we have to get this, this has to be a top priority right now? Yeah, I would say that given my bias towards customer centricity. It's something that's been always top of mind for me in all of my career. But at PandaDoc, I would say about a year in was when I really started to beat the drum about the customer journey and customer experience once we had some of the structure starting to form. And delightfully, last year, the executive team bought in to being customer focused versus more product focused as we had been for the past two years. So we're still a very, we're a PLG company, but we're layering on customer centricity on top of that. And I've been so encouraged to see the buy-in and engagement at the executive level to drive this new experience for our customers. Absolutely. Well, again, Amanda, 200 people on your teams how do you create consistency in the conversation with customers? Yeah. Was that a big challenge for you as, a, as an executive? It is. And I think part of what we're doing in 2023 is simplifying the business and we're realigning the team so that the customer speaks to, there's fewer handoffs, I guess, if you will. So to empower the team to be able to have those conversations at the right time and just in time. So this is just a snapshot of the, the team that we have today. We're going through a an amazing amount of enablement with this new alignment. And as we get a little deeper into that, we'll talk more about a couple of the tools that we're using from an AI perspective that help this initiative and fuel these customer conversations. Not only is it empowering each of our pandas to take matters into their own hands from a customer experience mm -hmm. perspective, but it illuminates these conversations, these customer needs, this customer sentiment all across the organization. It makes it very easy for us to align on exactly what the customer is saying and what they want. Do you set the vision up and align the teams on goals and help them understand how their actions will support the go-to-market strategy and your vision for CX? What's next? Now that you set up the vision, you set up the framework, what were some of the initiatives you took on in order to 
get that into action, actually deploy the vision and the strategy. Let me just jump forward here to some of the enablement activities that we've got going on. Role-based cross-training, career growth plans for our team, and then value-based selling and coaching. At the same time, we still have to run the business and keep up with everything that's happening product-wise. So there's a large focus on feature releases in Q1, et cetera, and ongoing throughout the year, staying on top of our competitors and what we need to do there to uh, be front and center for our customers. And then also making sure that we're always honing our technical skills and continually doing needs assessment to make sure that we are the absolute best that we can be and are delivering that curated experience for our customers. And how are these four activities essentially tie back to your vision of having consistent conversations that are targeted based on verticality and persona? So with all the change management that we have going on, we know that we're, first of all, we're a very tech-enabled team. So we use tools like Salesforce. We use tools like Gainsight. But this year, we've layered on AI to make us more efficient, more competitive. And it's become a kind of a table stakes factor for our strategy in 2023 in lessening the load on our leaders, allowing CSMs to take their career path and it lets them take the matters into their own hands. One of the things I wanted to share, we added Adabot last year for support. And so speaking of conversations with customers, this allows us to initially chat with a customer and either resolve their question or issue very quickly, or then jump into a a meeting with them to dive deeper to get to that resolution. What we found from that tool is that we achieved a 43% containment so far, which basically has saved us 1.5 million Mm -hmm. in headcount costs on a $100,000 investment. That's pretty huge. But the one that I'm more excited about is Aux, which is a, a new tool that we've launched last year and have used to help our CSMs and other roles move from, say, an associate role to a specialist role as they master those critical conversations. What's so nice about Ox is that it doesn't have to be at a certain time zone globally. They can, again, take matters into their own hands and say, you know what? I've got 30 minutes this morning before I start work or it's midnight, I can't sleep. I'm going to practice that conversation that I need to have with this challenging situation tomorrow so that I nail it and get the result that I need both for the customer and for PandaDoc. What's really cool about this as well is that it's not biased. You know, there's no egos. Mm. A CSM can get in and say, I want to practice a tough renewal discussion and they practice against themselves. So it's kind of like a, a golf game. A role you, play, essentially you know, a role they're... play without needing to have anybody to role play with you. Due to the AI, the AI basically, here's a screenshot of what it looks like in its most simplistic uh, nature. In this renewal call, a CSM scored 85 out of 100 points. Maybe they're trying to get to 90 or 100 to be absolutely perfect. But as leaders, we determine what the conversations are that we know where our gaps are and that everyone needs to master. And we will put in what the components are for that pitch. It could be that they need to ask questions, they need to ask for next steps, they need to make recommendations, they need to hit certain product points. And Ox will grade them based upon their confidence level, their intonation, whether they're too assertive, whether they're listening. So the practice gets them set up for the actual call. And in the actual call, it will also grade them and give them suggestions, kind of prompts, if you will, about what they might want to include in the conversation 
next. That's brilliant. I had no idea you invested in not only one, but two artificial intelligence tools. And those investments were made when, like a year ago? Both of these were made a year ago. Initially, when we launched Aux, one of the first things we used it for was a, I think we launched officially in November of 21. And in, I think, February of 22, we had an RKO where we brought all of the revenue teams, go-to-market teams together, and we had a new product release. And we wanted to make sure that everyone understood what the value points were. And so they used Ox for this. And we had a terrific RKO where some of the videos that came out of that, just the highlights, became mini commercials for PandaDoc because they were pitch perfect. Wow. So you're using Ox not just for your customer success managers, but also your renewal managers, aka account. Who what other yeah. teams are you using this for to not only make sure that specific processes or discussions are done properly, but also it sounds like to train them on the value prop for your solutions? Yes, we are now rolling it out to sales members as well. And we share what we call reels with our product team. So about a month ago, I happened to be in a meeting with a customer and it was being recorded with Ox through Zoom. And at the end of the conversation, the customer said, hey, there's just something else I'd like to add. And the next minute of their conversation was absolutely perfect to send over our to our product team so that they could hear it firsthand. It was unsolicited, unprompted, and the right message for the product team at that point in time. The thing that for me as a leader over CS and my job is to make my team's job easier so that they're successful, our customers are successful, and PandaDoc is successful. And so the thing that Ox does is the coaching element really, really well. With everything we've talked about of the massive amount of change that we have going on at PandaDoc right now, it takes a lot of load off of the leaders. It also makes it extremely easy and agile to consume for CSMs. And it's a, a nice to have to be able to take some of those moments and then share them with other cross-functional stakeholders so that they hear the same thing and it doesn't get watered down by the time it makes it back to the product team. Sometimes we have many channels that we take customer feedback, but a lot of it is black and white or data. It's not dynamic. This is, it's hard to argue with a customer saying exactly what they need and that being super easy for the product team to take and say, let's dig into this. Let's go back and look at the data. But it's just, it's a very easy lift. Got it. So all these videos are saved in a probably like a web library. The AI portion is just to provide that coaching, which is the differentiator. It's something that Ox does or this AI yeah. solution does that no other, you know, like a gong IO cannot do. However, oh, by the way, if you have that, it's easy to mark a certain section in the video and then send that to product. And then when they yeah. click, I suppose when they click on the link, they're just boom in that area, in that timestamp where you yes. want them to listen. They don't have to kind of figure out what would it like, let's scroll exactly. to that. <laughs> and you can probably even leave them notes as I could see on the screen here. And they don't have to take our word for it. Sometimes right. you'll have a CSM that's advocating for one customer, and it's really not the voice of mm. the entire customer base. But with Ox, you can put in keywords, of course. And so if we had a reel that was interesting and we send it over to the product team and they say, yeah, we want to know more, they come back and say, these are the five keywords. Can you search across Ox and pull more videos for me and let me hear other customers. So it's super easy and consumable all across the board. All right, let's, let's watch. Does your team often find multiple versions of the same document? That's why we created templates. The templates you use are a master copy of your document that can be reused 
over and over again, where you only need to change a couple of specific things on the document, but the rest stays the same. This helps you keep yourself consistent and minimizes those multiple versions. When you're doing document creation, it makes the whole process easier. Do you think you can find a use case for that with your current business? So that's basically a recording of a CSM explaining the benefits of, I suppose, PandaDoc to a customer. And then what we're seeing here is Ox or the AI solution essentially analyzing what it just heard. Yes. As a customer success leader, what do you see here? What do you learn from this? Keep it simple. A lot of times when you think you have a, a need, sometimes you over-engineer mm. and you over-engineer the training and it's expensive. Bringing people out of their jobs for an hour in a session and losing that full hour of time. It's about hitting each individual and what their specific needs are based upon their role, how they need to convey this information. And it's just super easy to use. There's not a, a big lift on either deploying it or consuming it. I've got a tremendous amount of empathy for, I've been a CSM in my career. That's how I started at WebEx. So I'm used to having those conversations that are new because it's a new feature or whatnot and wanting to get it to a point that you nail it and that the customer sees the value and they move forward and uh, adopt and become optimized. So now that you have all your customer success manager teams go through this good coach and with real life conversations as a, an executive have you started to seeing themes around what type of customer objections is my team not really fully trained on and creating enablement materials for them so that they can get better or upsell opportunities that you thought, oh, actually look at that conversation and let me create some enablement materials so this everybody becomes aware of this and can, can be coached? Yeah, I think, you know, we have probably about 200 different conversations today. We can have more and they are role-based, but they sometimes transfer across several different roles. But at PandaDoc, one of our principles has been initially was to, we can teach the technology, but we want the attitude the passion for the customer. And so we hire a lot of first-time job seekers and that requires a lot of training because they've never worked in a corporate environment. Mm -hmm. They've never met with a customer. They need that support. They need your help. And then you also have some people on the team that have either been with the company longer or more tenured or outside other talent that you've brought in to help mm -hmm. you level everyone up. And so tool like Ox is great because it fits the needs of everyone without trying to shoehorn in, like I said, an hour of maybe product training that frankly, most people probably sit and multitask during the session anyway, this way. And it's not just business skills. The skills they learn in this are life skills. Communication is one of the most important things that you can master either personally and certainly professionally. Absolutely, 100%. I think the investment that you make in your team is absolutely fantastic. I've, I've just never seen an AI solution being used to train and coach how to have more, I don't know, some of the categories were here were like empathy and open-ended questions. I think it's great. Uh, and no wonder you're starting to also use it with your sales team. So obviously, you showed us that this has helped increase NPS score with customers. So the customer experience is much better because the conversations are more eloquent. Mm -hmm. uh, was there any other impacts that you can identify after having a vision, creating an alignment, bringing in AI solutions into the tech stack mix? Did that have any impact on your ability to create enablement materials for your customer success teams in a more efficient manner? Yes. So we had seen increases in retention until we hit the economic slowdown that we're all in and working through today. But I think in that situation, it, it helped us 
maintain what we have from a retention standpoint. It's fueled our adoption and expansion efforts as well. We've seen an increase in our lifetime value. Our customers are staying longer. So goodness from a metrics and a revenue standpoint, for sure. But it's also, to your point, helped the our enablement team. They were very, I would say, lean and mighty on the CX side. We're now bringing over sales enablement, blending those two teams. So there's so much work to be done. But while they're working on the strategic plan for the year ahead, business hasn't stopped. CSMs, support reps, sales reps, SDRs, AMs, anybody across the team can continue to improve prove their skill set and perfect their craft with the conversations that we have today. Well, I just got to ask you, Amanda, you've been in multiple organizations, different sizes, grew and scaled a lot of teams. If I were a customer success or customer experience or even sales executive, do I need to have like 200 people before I kind of think, okay, this tool is, is for me or can I have like a small team and still make this? I mean, you know the level of investment. You, I have no idea. Is there yeah. a lot of investment to just tweak and customize this solution to make it even effective? Is it cost effective? Like, what do you think? It's extremely cost effective. If I compare Aux to Adabot, the other tool that we are using for chat AI, it's about a quarter of the cost. And I'd say we also have Gong as well, used differently, of course. It's not an enablement tool. And this is probably a quarter of the cost of Gong as well. So it's extremely cost effective. In that regard. And you think that there should be like at least X number of members on the team. I, I think it's applicable. Uh, it sounds like to support and account managers. So if you purchase something like that, could benefit a number of teams, not just customer success. So even if I have a small customer success teams, but I'm thinking about enabling it to everyone, then it makes sense. Like, what is the magic number? Do you, do you have one in, yep. in your head? I would say that Ox can be effective for a very small team if you don't have a enablement resource mm -hmm. or you don't have a lot of leaders. So if you've even got a small team of five to 10 people, I think it could still be very effective for your company because you can delay building out other roles because it does a lot of the work for them. Yeah. Well, fascinating. Honestly, I think that uh, we're going to see more and more use cases for artificial intelligence. And I want to thank you for highlighting this new software solution that I don't often hear customer success executives. So this is fairly innovative new charters for the customer success community. And I think anybody that watches this video is going to say, huh, I got to try this. So hopefully that's what they do. Um, we're, I guess we're going to include the links to ox.work. And what was the other solution that you mentioned? Adabot. Adabot. For mm -hmm. anybody that wants to infuse AI technology into their customer success tech stack. And Amanda, you're such a pioneer. You're just sticking new stuff on and trying different things and just trailblazing for the rest of us. So thank you so much for coming in today to the podcast and sharing some of the innovative ways that you help your team become more customer centric and more effective in their conversations. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it pleasure speaking with you today. And should you have any questions, if you're listening to this podcast, feel free to reach out. I'm Amanda at pandadoc.com. And I love to talk CX. That's awesome. Hey, I'll include your LinkedIn link, if you don't mind, in the description below. So feel free to reach out to Amanda. Amanda, you're awesome. Thank you so much for the conversation today. I enjoyed it. I hope everybody else liked it. If you did, guys, give it a like. Give it a thumbs up to this video. Comment below. What was your favorite part about this conversation? What did you learn that you might want to experiment within your own organization? And if you're using any other artificial intelligence tools, please mention them below. We want to learn about all the innovative ways that we can empower our customer success teams and make our customers more successful. And with that, Amanda, thank you so much again. 
Thank you. Yeah, have a great day and I'll see you at the next video.